Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dwarves, humans, elves, drow, orcs, all of you put together. Have you ever had a moment in your life where you were so cool, so amazing, and you just performed something so badass that you just can't believe that you've done it right? Well, today we're going to explore that concept in D&D with what was your most badass character moment in a session. This actually happened today in my Mad Mage game, I think. We were fighting a named NPC who was a cleric of Shar. Our own grave cleric attempted an attack with Toll the Dead. Shar bitch taunted our cleric. Oh child, you seek to strike at me with the powers of darkness. <laughs> I am the darkness. The dark serves me. Then it rolled to my turn. Cue my small-sized Harangon, I hope I pronounced that right, wizard. He'd been out of sight around a corner. When he heard that, he jumped over two of his allies, landed directly in Shar Bitch's line of sight, and glared her down with a rage that made him seem at least one size larger. I made a show of his voice booming through the chamber. If you so love the dark, then bathe in the light of my fire. Oh, man, I had so much fun voice acting this one. And the fireball he shot on cue decimated five of six unseen servants, freeing a prone ally, and took enough health off of a <clears throat> sharp bitch to bring her to bloodied. Oh, and this was a round or two after he'd dispelled her sanctuary. We have a special inclusion, by the way, by a certain somebody who says, I especially like this story because the prone ally he saved was actually a part of the Mr. Ripper team. So thank you, Tobias. Not a player, but a DM. The party had infiltrated the king's court to stop an eldritch being from possibly eating the king. Ugh. When combat started, a guard tried to detain the party sorcerer. This was 3.5, so she was able to use escape artist out of the grapple and then punched the guard. We've ruled that since monks get a d6, non-monks get a d4 until they get unarmed strike somehow. She nails the guard in the face with a nat 20, rolls max damage, and then had a two strength modifier for a total of 10 damage. Knocked the guard out in one hit. Hey, no touching. We were in Tales of the Abyss. The guard captain was charging people money at the front gate and working for one of the criminal organizations in the city. The Iron Horn. I was a necromancer and we discovered through some information gathering that the last guard captain had died under <clears throat> not so mysterious circumstances at dinner. We went and talked to the deceased captain with Speak with the Dead to learn what he knew, after which I brought him back to life as a zombie follower. Fast forward a few weeks and we wound up in a battle against the corrupt guard captain, with the formerly deceased old one waltzing in for the brawl. The new guard captain was horrified as the brawl steadily fell from his favor, the zombie captain finishing them off. When the corrupt guard captain asked why we did this, I said we were restoring the honor of this city on behalf of the man you murdered. Now there's a statue in the town square dedicated to the dead guard captain who we had left in the catacombs acting as an independent guardian of the city. He's now known as the hero from beyond the grave who comes when the city is at risk of rotting at its heart. Batman. I currently play in a game every Tuesday, but for a while my character didn't feel like she'd be a good fit. So the DM and I talked about it and came up with a way to switch her out for a bit. When we started talking about what character I'd like to bring in temporarily, I admitted that I hadn't really given it much thought. He suggested a paladin I played years ago named Galleon Lionheart. Now this campaign was supposed to be a relatively serious campaign, but our party is made up of a purple tiefling bard noblewoman who at the time had nothing but utility spells and had never ventured far out from the noble quarter of Neverwinter. An undead barbarian in full plate armor. A kitsune who literally fell from the sky and a nine-foot-tall metal statue in a bear suit. Yeah, weeby dinguses. My regular character is a swift stride shifter fey wanderer ranger. It's telling when the shifter is the least weird character in the group. So when he mentioned playing Galleon, 
I started giggling like an idiot. <laughs> you see, Galleon is uh, <clears throat> a, a moron. He's a paladin of Ilmeter, but he loves pie. And when he first heard the name Ilmeter, he had pie on the brain. So his pie-addled brain heard, Oh, platter. His holy symbol is a cherry pie with dripping filling, and the dripping filling is the red strings of Ilmeter. Also, he has a stash of pie tins, which he learned how to throw while he was bored. He invented frisbee, basically. Galleon tries hard, but he's really bad at being a paladin. He has, however, through his special brand of dingusness, ended up becoming something of a legend. Or, as my DM for this campaign put it, Paladin of all bladder, holder of the holy pie plate, and the only paladin who is known to possess the ability to smite with pie tins. In the short time he was with the party, he introduced them to Frisbee by rolling a nat 20 to throw a pie tin through a hoop. He got a bardic inspiration, and I asked if I could roll performance to have him dance along with the song the bard sang, rolled a nat 20, and got a d8 inspiration instead of a d6. And the badass thing he did? In the first combat we were in, he swung at a zombie a couple times and missed. Then said, All right, I'm getting tired of your shit. You need to die now. <laughs> the DM and I both chuckled and said, Roll persuasion. Nat 20 plus 7. The zombie just uh, gave up and died. <laughs> I've never made an enemy die from a persuasion check before, but Galleon is legendary like that. My character is a ranger cleric of the Raven Queen and Curse of Strahd. We were having dinner with Strahd, and here's how one conversation went. I think you're a terrified man, too scared to die, too afraid to lose what doesn't even belong to you. I fear nothing. I am death. Well, in that case, I'll be glad to reintroduce you to the feeling of fear. Remember my face, Strahd. It'll be the last one you see. Ooh, got a fucking chill up my spine, hello? Was a tiefling blade singer, concentrating on Don while fighting a lich riding a kraken. Killed the kraken by standing under it, we were on the shore, and putting a lightning bolt through it, and almost hitting the undead. Undead wishes to maintain height advantage, uses investure of wind to fly. Makes the mistake of going straight up ends its turn within dawn, and fails its con save. Cue the DM swearing as he calculates fall damage. Cue the DM swearing some more as he rolls max damage. TLDR, Bladesinger takes out giant pet from below, gets out of the way only for the mini big bad evil guy to go splat at his feet. A Final Fantasy, I believe that's 14, homebrew game, had a few moments that stuck out but my personal one had to do with what started as a complete mess outnumbered 50 to 1 and ended in an unmitigated disaster outnumbered 10 to 1, but that one was literally just me because the other PCs and generic backup were out of the fight. So I did the only sensible thing a horned bean with a great sword and dark magic would do. I doubled down. Garleans, I would like to discuss surrender. Surely you can see the end is at hand. <laughs> You're joking, Shirley Knight. Brave words, but your veneer cracks. Just my veneer of calm. I apologize in advance for the coming evil that is about to devour your men. Then I made good on that threat. I killed six, allowed the runner to rout, kept the three prisoners, and then later put them in indentured servitude to buy off their freedom. What a good boy you are. We were trying to sneak into a military encampment and our former military fighter used a hat of disguise to convince the guard at the gate that the shift was changing early. Thanks to Pass Without Trace, I was able to sneak in as the guard walked away, but our third member, the Barbarian, rolled a natural one and was spotted. Before a commotion could break out, I, an artificer, used Vortex Warp, new spell from Strixhaven, to teleport the Barbarian inside the gate next to me. The fighter nailed a deception check, and the DM begrudgingly said the guard thought he was seeing things, and the heist proceeded undeterred. My character was new to the party, and no one had seen the spell before. 
This moment really felt like the catalyst to cement my place in the group. Everyone was so hyped. And to this day, the group tends to turn to me whenever we need some random bullshit to save a situation. We were playing a Deadlands campaign, Old West with Mad Science. Ooh, that sounds fun. So I bought a broadsword and cut the arms off several cowboys who had guns, by the way. Very fun. Later, burned down a shed because there were bees in it. Well, that's one way to get rid of a pest problem. Was playing in a game where each PC's characters was a chosen one characters. Each born with a special birthmark that marked them and where special forces for a council of super-powered NPCs would complete missions for them with unlimited jurisdiction. Think Spectres from Mass Effect. Oh, my heart, you mentioned Mass Effect and Spectres. Mm. My character was Lucian Amor Kingston Satana and made sure everyone he met knew his name and would never forget it. Not very humble. Custom lineage human with a dash of devil blood in him from background reasons, evocation wizard that acted like your stereotypical horny bard. With just enough charisma to back it up. As the game went on, our DM at the time would bury us with magic items. So many that we couldn't even use them all. They were also very fond of homebrewing absurd things for fun. With items and other boost by level 14, Lucian's spell save DC reached an absurd 26, with a plus 16 to spell attacks, though he didn't have a single attack spell. All AoE and save or suck spells. Towards the end of the campaign, our group set off to defeat an evil white dragon. Obviously, the white dragon was also buffed. What really mattered, though, was that it had four times its original hit points, so he had a steep hill to climb. Prior to the fight, Lucian gained access to loads of lore for almost every creature type there was, especially dragons. Lucian also got a hold of Staff of Command, which, if you didn't know, goes off your spell save DC. The fight starts. The dragon uses frightful presence on us and Lucian fails. This didn't matter. For his first turn and almost every turn after that, Lucian casts Command, and in Draconic utters the word, Grovel. Seeing fear in the dragon's eyes, as well as the DM, the dragon fails and on his turn must spend it doing so, wasting his turns. Again and again and again and again and again, Lucian keeps this up. Even without legendary resistance, the dragon has a hard time making the saves. Lucian looks the dragon in the eyes. I have more spell slots than you have resistances. You're very right to be afraid. <laughs> Even with this, it was still a difficult encounter. We came out on top, of course, and it was one of my proudest moments as a player. I'm the DM. The player is a 5th level Triton Rogue in Princes of the Apocalypse. The group was assaulting a tower occupied by fire elemental cultists. Well, they more or less sauntered up the tower and did nothing as the priest summoned a fire elemental, who then began attacking them. The party was taking fire damage left, right, and center until the rogue said, I'm going to use my racial ability to cast Wall of Water, and then I'm going to drench the fire elemental. <laughs> she created a wall 20 foot high, 1 foot thick, and a 20 foot radius around the fire elemental. That is 628.3 cubic feet of water. At 7.5 gallon per cubic foot of water, we were looking at, I don't know, 4,712 gallons of water? That's a lot of water. Now, when the fire elementals get splashed, they take one cold damage for every gallon splashed on them. The poor elemental had no chance against 4,712 points of cold damage. And that is how you put out a forest fire, kids. Hey everyone, Brian Von VA checking in after the vid. Make sure to leave a like to subscribe and to ring that bell to get notified when we post or go live. If you want to catch us really live though, check out our Twitch page. And if you'd like some one-off 30 second to 60 second videos, check out our TikTok. And if you want to submit a story to us, do so on r slash Mr. Ripper. Links are in the description below. To find me, just check me out on any social media under Brian Von VA. I do a lot of things. And I always try to end things on a positive note. As per usual, I just want to say one thing. Hard work pays off. Now, of course, hard work is different for all of us, and sometimes hard work for one of us is not hard work for another one of us. But don't let that ever define what hard work is for you. Sometimes hard work for you 
might not be that hard to other people because, well, you might have a physical issue or a mental issue. That's okay though. You do your best. That is the important part in this world. Doing your best and working hard, making sure that you get shit done. And I know sometimes you don't feel like it, but the end result is going to blow your mind. Trust me, I've had years of my life stolen from me because I didn't work that hard, because I had a lot of problems going on. But the moment I said, screw all this shit, I want to get going, man, did I feel good. And it's worth it. And you're worth it. More importantly, you are worth all of that effort and more. Take it. Enjoy it because you only got one shot and you deserve all the love and all the life that you have or all the love that you're going to be getting and all the life that you're going to have ahead of you. So work your ass off, try your best, and don't let anyone put you down. All the love, be safe. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.